All right, here's what I'm gonna use to winterize the Nautique with the PCM engine. Uh, first, I got some other options. I've got the heater installed. So I use a pick to uh, help with the heater hose. All right, wrenches, an 11 sixteenths, nine sixteenths, and a half. Those are gonna help get your uh, freeze plugs out of your manifolds. All right. All right. Something five sixteenths to get the hose clamps off. Uh, definitely a nut driver or a quarter inch drive socket with a long extension um, would be sufficient. Uh, I wouldn't try a wrench. All right. A one inch socket. You may need this, you may not. The uh, knot sensors, there's a plug that you gotta pull out sometimes. Sometimes it'll, uh, sometimes the small hole will drain, sometimes it won't, sometimes it gets clogged. Um, so you might have to pull it off. Um, make sure you have the right size drive for that. Uh, so here's the ratchet I like flex head and then so it's three eighths and I grab a half inch to three eighths adapter All right. this thing is great sometimes it'll help you get the drain plug out of the transmission that's a half inch drive uh, put that in there all right a good light some towels what I don't have right now is a paper plate or something else to direct water. A lot of the water that comes out of these manifolds is dirty. And if you've got carpet in that area, it's gonna stain that carpet. So uh, I use the paper plate to help deflect the water. All right, um, a knife, and I'll show you what that's for later. All right, and then this is what I got for my ballast tanks. So I use one gallon of RV antifreeze per ballast tank and uh, Basically, I use the installed pumps to create a vacuum on the tank and then suck it in with this with this little adapter that I got from the auto parts store. I took some uh, electrical tape, made a big old ball on the end of it that helps seal the uh, seal where I put it in at the uh, the little through hole connector. All right, let's go down to the boat. I'll get this thing started and uh, I'll show you how I do it. All right, I start by run the boat a little bit. That'll flush out any sediment in the manifolds that might've settled while it wasn't running. And then also if it's cold outside, it's gonna help it, it's gonna help it, uh, you stay warm at least. My tensioner pulley is getting worse.
tell you about one thing about having a boat on a lift. Make sure you always leave your drain plug in. If the water ever gets too high or the cable snaps on your boat, your boat won't sink. Also tie off the front so that if it does fall, at least it stays tied to the dock. So we'll start on the starboard side. All right, here we are on the starboard side. I've climbed down in here. The big, the big thing is make sure you bring everything you need. Uh, getting in and out of the boat, uh, that's what wears you out. Then that, you know, that's when you start hitting tools and scratching gel coat and everything. So uh, starboard side, I need a 5 16 nut driver, half inch wrench, a one inch drive, a 9 16 wrench, and 11 16 wrench. So what I like to do is start at the bottom so this pipe here is your raw water coming in and there is a plug you can pull but it is very 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 slow so i like to take this hose clamp loosen it and just pull that hose right off all right all right next is the knock sensor so no need to take the plastic connector off just take your half inch wrench pull off the actual sensor don't lose the bolt Next, it takes a one inch. Well, that one's actually draining. Some of them drain, some of them don't. All right. Next on the bottom of the manifold is a drain. It's a 9 16 All right. Don't take it all the way out. Just get it loose and get your paper plate ready. Sometimes this water is dirty. You don't want dirty water leaking down onto your carpets. So I use the paper plate to deflect the water. See there, it had a little bit of color. Next is a bit of an odd size one, 11 16 Let that drain. All right, so we'll let that drain and we'll go over to the port side. All right, here we are on the port side. On the bottom, we've got the knock sensor. So that's gonna be a half. No need to undo the electrical. We'll see if this one drains too. There's a small hole on the inside of this plug. Sometimes they get clogged up and they don't drain. You've got to pull the whole thing out. That takes a one inch socket or wrench. Again, don't drop the bolt. All right, next. 11 sixteenths, sorry, nine sixteenths. On this one, and our paper plate, because this water is probably dirty. All 
All right, 11 16th. Most of the water must have drained out the other side on that one. All right. All right, here's the hard one. On the back, bottom of the water pump. Let's see if we get some light there. Somewhere on that water pump. Here's a good tip. Do not leave these drain plugs out. Make sure you put these drain plugs in. Number one, it's easier when it comes to spring. You'd be ready just to put the boat in the water and go. Second part, I've learned this from experience. The inside of those threads will corrode. When they corrode, you can't get the plugs back in. You wind up stripping plugs, stripping threads. Uh, I didn't get that far, I stopped in time. But then you got to go find taps and uh, it, this, it's not too fun. All right. So we're going to let this water drain and we'll come back, put in the drain plugs. But for now, this boat has the uh, heater in it and I'll show you how I get the water out of it. All right. So let's go to the top side of the engine. All right. Top side of the engine. Mine was dealer installed, so yours might be different if it was factory installed. But here's your hose going to your heater. 5 sixteenths on the hose clamp. Here's the tricky part. I've had to cut this before just to get it off. Um, a good set of picks, you can get up under there and try to break it free. And every once in a while, it does come loose on its own. Yep, got it off. All right, now on to the other side of the heater core line. All right, all the way towards the back of the engine. It's the other side of the heater core. Same type setup. 5 sixteenths on the hose clamp. Try to hold on to that hose clamp. If not, it'll slide down the hose. Then you'll have to fish it out. All right, there it goes. All right, got the hose clamp. Set it to the side. All right, now we need to get that hose as low in the bilge as possible. All 
All right, let's make it through there. All right, now back to the upper hose. This is what I do. I just take the hose and I blow air into it and try to get all the water to go out of the heater core and into the bilge. Goes back up. I'm in North Carolina. It doesn't get too cold. I think if I was anywhere where it got really cold, that and I keep the boat over the top of the water too. So that helps keep it warm. If I was somewhere really cold, I would probably pour some antifreeze in that line. North Carolina will have a few weeks where it'll sit in the 20s, maybe into the teens. Rarely do we see single digits. All right, so I'm gonna tighten that hose clamp up and then we'll move on to uh, getting the water out of the strainer and the raw water system and the transmission. All right, so what I like is an angle head 3 8 drive ratchet with a half inch adapter on it. Just gives me a little bit more room than a, uh, a standard half inch ratchet. Underneath the V drive, there is a square head plug. All right, next is the raw water filter. We'll put that back on. Make sure the water stopped. All right, we'll put that plug back in. All right, I'll tighten this up. Then we'll move on to putting all the other plugs in. So we'll go to the starboard side first. All right, back on the starboard side, we'll start at the top. Mm 
right. That's our 11 sixteenths. All right. Now the bottom of the manifold. It's a nine sixteenths. All right. Down to the knock sensor. Put your adapter back in if you had to take it out. I did not. I like to face these connectors down if any water gets in them. Hopefully gravity help you. Gonna be a half inch. All right. And the last thing on this side is the raw water. All right. Make sure that slid all the way up. Yep, that's good. And the hose clamp is a 5 sixteenths. All right, we'll tighten that up. And then we will be back on the port side. All right, port side, port side. Starting at the top. All right, that was 11 sixteenths. Moving to the bottom of the manifold. It's gonna be a nine sixteenths. All right, on to the knock sensor. Again, put your adapter in if you had to take it out. Half inch on that one. All right, and the most difficult one on the back of the water pump. I'll try to get some light in there for you. Moment. It takes me to find it. 9 on that one. There's the port side. Now climb out 
and we'll do the ballast tanks. All right, I'll turn the battery back on. I've shorted out too many starters in my life, so I get pretty good about turning batteries off when I'm working in engine compartments. Get everything to boot up here. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the tanks are as dry as the pumps will get them. Port's dry. Belly is dry. Starboard is dry. All right, so now how I do this, I need some help. So hopefully the wife gets back down here. In the meantime, I go ahead and put all these covers back on. And uh, I'll show you how I get the antifreeze in the ballast tanks. All right, so I use a gallon per tank. This has got a belly, a port, and a starboard. Go ahead and prep these. So this is just an adapter from the auto parts store, tubing, and then I just made a knot of electrical tape on the end. This is, this is... All right, so this would be for the belly. The front, the front is the bilge on mine. The rear is the belly, uh, belly tank. If you don't know, if you start the pump, you should feel air moving through. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna pull a vacuum using the ballast pump on the tank. So we're going to start emptying the belly. All right. So with this tank closed, I'm going to put this in the hole. It's going to pull a vacuum. After a few seconds, I'll turn off the ballast pump. All right, hold this up, open it up, and it's gonna start the drain. It's gonna pull out a good amount. What helps is if you have somebody put a hole in the top. It'll go out a little quicker. Now that I got the whole gallon of the tank, I'll drain the belly again, waiting for the waiting for the RV antifreeze to come out the bottom. That's good. All right, so we'll repeat that for the starboard side and then get on the port side. The port side has two, uh, one for the rear bilge and the other for the ballast tank. Again, towards the rear is, is for my ballast tank. The front or the forward is for the bilge. And that is what I do to winterize. Uh, the motor, the heater system, and the ballast tanks. What we'll do next is I've got, I typically use the one gallon bucket of rid, but they were out. I guess I'm a little late in the season. Um, I'll put the cover on the boat. 
I'll make sure I put the plug in the boat. We'll open up these things a damp red. And then I'll also tie off the boat just in case it does uh, flood up or uh, we lose a cable. The boat won't float away. Well, that's it.